All right, guys. Jason Creel here, Lawn Care Life YouTube channel. We've been doing this on Monday nights, uh, going live and taking your questions. And sometimes I come on here by myself. Sometimes I have guests. So you may be wondering who these two guys are. I've got Andy Walters and Jonathan Guaneri. He said it was like Canary with a G. Uh, I told you I'd do the best I could. So anyway, um, they are both with XMark, and they are here to join us. So what is going to work today, you guys ask me whatever you want to ask me, like we always do, lawn care questions, uh, lawn care business questions. But also, um, these guys are going to be experts on, on – between the two of them on anything, all things X Mark pretty much, and the Z Turf equipment, which is your Z sprays. I've got the X Mark or what used to be the X Mark LTS, the Z uh, Z Turf equipment LTS. So, any questions you got about lawnmowers and um, ride on spreader sprayers and things like that, um, we can talk to these guys about that. So, happy to have you guys. Welcome, Andy and Jonathan. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, thank you, Jason. All right. So we're going to get to the questions and we'll uh, see what happens. We usually take these in order. Some of them are, are crazy. I have to skip over. But what is a good application rate per thousand for a 4600 urea? And uh, I don't know, what's that word? Y'all know that word? Sulfate, something for sulfate in a spray solution. Um, and do this for me, guys. If, and we've asked you in the past, if you can tell me where you live and what kind of grass you're dealing with, that's very helpful because, you know, application rate of, of a product like that, like, for instance, no, almost nobody's put any fertilizer out where I live right now. We, we put our fertilizer up. Um, so I'm assuming uh, this is probably cool season grasses. And I'll just go ahead and tell you I'm more with warm season grasses. And the other thing is people that are watching the audience, if you guys have a good answer for a question, then feel free. So uh, I'm afraid sure. we'll need more information on that. Yeah, Jason, one of the things on that one would be, you know, he said in a liquid form. So usually um, most guys won't go below a gallon per thousand square feet when they're doing liquid fertilizer just for the chance of burning. So um, usually it'd be a gallon, gallon and a half, two gallons of water per thousand square feet. And like you're saying, it depends on what part of the country you're in as far as how much nitrogen you're going to put down. And, and, and on that topic, if so, like if they're using a Z spray, like how, what's the max volume you can get out of it? And then if you, if it won't put out that much, what do you do in that situation? So great question. One of the things that you can put out as much water as you want. It's a question of how fast are you willing to go? So uh, you could slow a machine down to two miles an hour and put a lot of water out. So it's a trade off of how efficient you are. So it's kind of a loaded question, but um, you know, one of the things that I'll go back with on, on that with you could, most guys, two gallons is about as much as anyone wants to do per thousand square feet with a ride on piece of equipment. Um, usually after they start at two, they'll back down to a gallon and a half because most guys dragging a hose are doing two gallons per thousand. So they'll back down to a gallon and a half, and then usually they'll get closer to a gallon. One of the biggest reasons for that is, you know, if you're doing an acre and you're going to do two gallons per thousand, you're going to need 90 gallons of water per acre. So if you're trying to do 10 acres that day, which isn't that much with a ride on piece of equipment, you need 900 gallons of water. Yeah. So that's one of the questions I ask guys right off. They're like, we're thinking we're going to go all liquid next year. And that's a big, you know, cause they think it's going to be faster. They want to blow off sidewalks. Um, so a lot of those things, but then when you start talking production with them, that's when the light bulb starts to go off. Cause it sounds great, but you know, and it's, if you're dragging a hose 10 acres, I mean, that is an amazing day, but if you know, if you've got a right on piece of equipment, some guys will say they do 20 acres a day. So, yeah. Yeah. When I'm spraying out of a hose, I'm, I'm at two gallons per thousand is what I, you know, and people go less than that, even with a hose and a big tank sprayer. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was helpful. Um, and then he, he came back and said, yes. Yeah. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Clarify your question uh, for us and maybe we can get you some more information. Sean says a Honda, Honda HRN 216 FTW. I'm not sure what the, am I missing something here? All right. Thomas says, hello, do you use methylated seed oil uh, as a surfactant? Thomas, 
I use that uh, in certain situations. Uh, most of the time, no, but a situation where I would use that is like, uh, for instance, in about this time of year, honestly, when it hits October, November, that's a great time for us to try to knock the douse grass out of our Bermuda lawns. And so we go with a product like Tribute Toll or something like that. And it, in, it is uh, supposedly more effective when you use the methylated seed oil. Way, way it was explained to me is, uh, and I don't have the science to back this up, but basically it's, it's a more natural um, surfactant that the plant takes in, absorbs better because it, it uh, is more natural. So anyway, um, but yeah, products like Tribute Total when I'm going after really tough weeds is about the only time I use it. All right, William says, hello, North Carolina here. Um, can a Toro dealer, he's got the Toro, uh, what do you call that thing that has, where usually your picture is? He's got that for his uh, picture. Can a Toro dealer work on an Exmoor mower since they are the same company? Jonathan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that one's all up to the dealer there. Um, you know, dealers can can work on all, all types of equipment, all brands of equipment. Um, you know, my best advice there is, is take, you know, get your unit serviced where you bought it um, and, and form a relationship with the dealer there. But if you move somewhere or there's something like that, yes, uh, you know, obviously look if it's an X Mark mower, your closest X Mark dealer. But if there's not one that's close by, maybe talk with a Toro dealer and start to develop a relationship with them to, to work on the equipment you have. And, and Jonathan, can you help me understand how this works? So, so I'm trying to clarify as far as, um, is there do you guys like Xmark makes lawnmowers and then do they go to a distributor who then gives them out to the dealers or or is it is that kind of the situation that is correct that is correct so we we make the lawnmowers and then they get shipped out to our our distributors we have six of them across the country um that service you know the entire 50 you know all 50 states uh and then from the distributor it goes to independent dealers Okay, because like I've got a dealer that's five minutes down the road or ten minutes down the road, you know. But I, so my distributor would cover multiple states, is what you're getting at. That is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, Wesley says, "Centipede, Bermuda, Saint Augustine. Can I use Simazine on all those grass types?" The answer, Wesley, is yes, you can. I'm, I, I did that today. Actually, sprayed all those grass types with Simazine. I'm using two pints uh, per acre. And I'm mixing that with my, um, you know, with my pre-emergent. So if I'm using Spectacle, I'm still putting the Simazine with it. I'm hoping that you, you, I can't be perfect timing on all my applications. So I'm hoping that if some POA germinates and it gets past the Spectacle somehow, hopefully the Simazine will knock it out and, and just other weeds that may have already germinated. The zoysia grass handles sand well for leveling. Um, well, I think, and I was talking to some guys the other day about this. They, I say, what do y'all, they have like golf course, golf course type lawn, literally and, and real mowing and all that. And they, I said, what do you use the level? They said, we just use straight up sand. And I've heard that, you know, the, the problem with sand is yes, it's fantastic for leveling, but it's not a lot of nutrients in sand. It's just, so I don't know what, do y'all have any thoughts on that as far I've heard like go you know, at least half and half, maybe heavier on the topsoil and mix some sand with the topsoil. But do you have any thoughts on leveling? Aeration and rolling. Yeah, up here in the north, and I mean, we do not see a lot of that going on. It's probably happening on sports fields, but as yeah. far as residential lawns, it's, yeah, like Jonathan said, aeration, it will happen a lot here. But as far as, um, you know, I see these uh, spreaders, but uh, at GIE, I always see all the spreaders and I, that, you never see them up here in Indiana or so, in, unless I'm missing it somewhere. I guess that but when I see it here, it's mostly people that literally want to real mow their lawn. And so they're out there mowing it, you know, three times a week. Uh, let's see. Do you prefer liquid fertilizer or granular fertilizer during the summer months? Southeast U.S. with Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine. Um, Andy, do you have some thoughts? Well, I have some thoughts, but do you have anything that kind of pros and cons of going liquid versus granular? Well, you know, so me being a cool season turf guy, we're nor most guys will do granular fertilization. There are some that do liquid, but with the granular, 
um, on some of our applications where we're just putting fertilizer down. You know, a guy can have 300 pounds of fertilizer on his machine, spread 20 feet wide, go five miles an hour. And so when you think of the production that they can do, especially with our short season, it just kind of blew my mind that you're getting ready to put that you're putting pre-emergen out. You know, we're getting ready to hibernate for the next seven months, six months. Yeah. Um, so we're not even thinking about that. But um, our windows short. So most guys here in 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 everywhere that I know of are doing granular. Um, a lot of people do like the liquid. I know on a spreader sprayer or even when you're walking, you have to be real careful of overlap and things like that. So a little bit harder to get an even coverage. Um, someone might tell me I'm wrong on here, but as far as, you know, for me, it's, it's a little easier with the granular with the hundred percent overlap. So now there is blowing off all the sidewalks and driveways and all that, all that type stuff. But um, I'd say, you know, the biggest portion of, right on equipment people are spreading fertilizer granular there is a good amount of guys that do all liquid though yeah i, I see both i pretty much uh, pretty much all granular as far as my fertilizer one reason I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of nitrogen and i want it to last for months you know like i, I got a long growing season and so i can't go out there and you know spray liquid every four weeks i mean i could i guess but i'm saying i'm i put out slow release granular and i want it to last so you know, four months. And uh, I don't think I can get that capability out of liquid. And, and Jason, one other thing to that is when you guys are doing all that liquid down there, you're doing multiple pre-emergent apps, which most of the time will only do one. Some guys will do a follow-up app of pre-emergent. So you've got some expensive products that, you know, when you're doing nine, 10 applications, you can save quite a bit of money. Plus you might throw in a fungicide with that or you may do um, some type of grub treatment. So it makes sense when you guys in the South do some of these big liquid uh, batches of, of mix. Yeah, yeah, I've seen people that when you get into springtime and you, you still need to be doing weed control, but you're wanting to get a little color on the grass, um, sometimes they'll mix li a liquid fertilizer in and just spray it all at one time, you know? So there, there's advantage but when it gets straight up summer most everybody around here goes granular because again you're trying to get a lot of nitrogen on the on the ground and you want it to last a long time juan just says what's up jason glad i made it to your life thanks juan for being here if you got a question throw it at us uh william says do a lot of people use the motorized shoot blocker to keep grass from going on the sidewalk uh I, I, I guess there are some motorized ones. I've had several of those shoot blocks, shoot blockers. Um, some are better than others. I'll say that. And then, but I, I, I personally like them. Um, I know you, you can go, uh, and Jonathan, I'll let you speak this in a second, but I, you can go like full mulch kit. Okay. Which is great for mulching best you can. And you can go just straight up side discharge, which has its advantages or, you know, and to me, the shoot block is kind of in between, um, it's not going to mulch as good as a mulch kid, but it's it's it does keep you from breaking windows and stuff. So there, there's some advantages. But what's your thoughts on the the shoot block? Again, I don't know if the motor is important. Some of them have a handle, some have a motor. But what's your thoughts on the shoot block? Yeah, I, I would uh, I'd shy away from the motorized ones because it's only a matter of time, just due to the location of of where that is on the deck. Um, you know, if you can get a mechanical one, that that's going to be your best bet. And um, you know, it's it's really one of those things where it's it, all depending on how you run your equipment. Right. Um, but if you do have a place for having a, a shoot blocker, they're, they're a great accessory or a great add on to have. All right. El Mino says, what is the cost of an X mark mower maintenance from the dealer? So I guess he's talking about, I don't know, oil change and spark plugs and belts. And so is, is there a, a rate or is that just up to the each individual dealer? pretty much up to each individual dealer. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. I have seen, you know, around here, it's usually anywhere from 65 to maybe $90 an hour labor rate, you know, and then they're going to usually charge you a half hour labor to do anything, which is understandable. They're not measured by the minute. Robert says, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Robert. Um, is Scott's coated seed okay for overseeding or should I use a Beringberg, a better choice? 
Um, I, I tell people we don't hardly overseed anything down here. Only time only people overseed is if it gets you got those few people that want their grass green in the winter time. They overseed. But yep, do y'all have any experience with the seeds, Scott seeds, or anything? Somebody no, haven't used any of the coated. Out. Yeah, I haven't used any of the coated um, seed. I've seen a lot of it on the market, and that's why I wonder. You know, I'm pretty frugal when I look at one of those bags, and it's got so much in it. How much of that weight is? is not seed and is, is something different, the coating. So, um, you know, that's ultimately what you're looking for is the price per thousand square feet in most cases. Yeah. I've heard from multiple sources that seed is, is definitely up this year and the price of seed has gone big time. So I'm sure the guys up that are over area and over, is that what's going on now? And, uh, these guys are in Nebraska and Indiana. Is that, is that what pretty much everybody's out there aeration and overseeding yards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here in Indiana, oh, we'll go, yeah. yeah, we'll start seeding now. Um, usually, uh, September fifteenth is about the last. We'll start trying to put grass seed out just so it germinates before temperatures get too cool. But that's kind of the time frame here is aeration and overseeds right right now. Right after we get through the hot part of summer, um, if we get some nice cool fall rains in the fall night with enough dew, we'll get get good germination there. So yeah, a lot of landscapers right now are doing. Uh, overseed aerations okay and then after that it's from a weed control fertilization business what is that the end of the game until next spring i mean is that it's over yeah i mean guys might put down you know slow release nitrogen something like that you know that's why it comes back quick next spring but yeah, yeah they're they'll be putting the wands to bed here you know i'd say definitely within the next month or so i got you see ours just keeps going and we never <laughs> we never stop i mean i you know it's year round all right, Oliver says, do you or James, James is a friend of mine who chimes in every once in a while, he's having experience with Flumigard. I'm not going to try to say that. That's for pond weed treatment, but is the same active ingredient of SureGuard. Um, I don't I do not do any, um, any of the pond treatments or anything like that. I am familiar with SureGuard. I, I was spraying. Uh, I've got SureGuard mixed up today. Actually, I've got some beds to, to spray. And I had somebody actually text me while I go asking about SureGuard. So SureGuard is a fantastic product. I'm using it's quarter ounce um, per uh, per thousand square feet. And he, he continues. I was thinking about applying it on bare ground with glyphosate just to SureGuard. I, I would check the label on that. It costs 50 bucks where SureGuard is 200. Any thoughts? Yeah, SureGuard is expensive. When you buy the bigger bottle, it's close to like 600 bucks. I, didn't, I, I guess I forgot what I paid for it. But a quarter of an ounce per thousand square feet. So it goes a long way. Um, but, you know, sometimes I understand that there's alternative products, but you might want to check the label. I'm not sure if, you know, it, it may be fine, but I, I would be careful about using an aquatic product product in a flower bed without reading the label first. So check that out. Uh, but no, I don't, sorry, I don't have any experience with that. I'm considering the LTS spreader sprayer. I was wanting to know how soon are parts available if something breaks, what kind of turnaround time, and what is the warranty on them? Thanks. You guys provide some info on that. Sure. Uh, so as far as, as parts go, parts and availability of parts go, we are, are looking solid there. Um, you know, if something does break, we do that, you know, that any turf management product from us comes with a one-year manufacturer warranty. Uh, so if anything breaks, you know, during that warranty period of time, obviously it's something we would cover. Uh, and then turnaround time, you know, it's one of those things too, where you, you I go back to developing that relationship with a dealer, right? Um, getting to know them this way you can work with them if there is a service issue hey if i bring this in can you look at it real quick i need to get it you know back out up and going because guys understand that you know now is the time of year where turf management equipment is making its money right all right and also you know to jonathan's point there's that relationship with the dealer most our distributors with us having those six distributors um if the dealer doesn't have it in stock it's usually within two days uh, because of having them spaced out all around the country. So we have good supply on parts. Yeah. And, and Andy, can you talk about this for a second? Cause I know you and I had this conversation when I was, I've got the LTS machine and you know, the advantage that I've had from what other machines I've used is just the spraying capability is superior to what I'm used to. But I know that you and I talked through like, 
uh, how you choose a Z spray or the Z spray junior or the LTS or, you know, so when you have those conversations with people like you did me, can you just talk to our audience and like think through how do you decide which machine to get for which other than like this one costs more or less? Let's, let's try to make sure. leave money out of, cause I don't know that that's always a, the biggest determining factor. They want the best machine for their situation. Sure. Well, you, the first thing I usually like to start with with people is what's their average square foot size lawn. You know, um, if they're an East Coast company and, and, and I typically think of the East Coast having a lot of small lawns, 7,000 square foot, also possibly a lot of traffic. Guys don't want to pull a trailer in a lot of situations. So in those situations, if they say I, I need to fit in a 36 inch gate, I want to put this machine on a rack behind a truck. Those are all great reasons to go, OK, lean to steer is going to be a great machine for you. You know, uh, hill stability, um, those it's a hydrostatic machine with the, the steering on it. So they do great on hills. So if a guy says, you know, I got a lot of hills, uh, tight areas, small lawns, lean to steer is going to be a great machine. Um, after that, you know, then we kind of go the junior 36. Uh, it's still going to fit in a three foot gate. Um, but in that situation, we go to a machine with dual tanks. So you could run two different products in that machine. Uh, so some versatility there. And then you can start adding on, a, you know, accessories like foam markers or an isolated tank where you could do tree and shrub or perimeter pest or total kill. Um, so that one's going to fit in a three foot gate. And we call that one a 3624. And all the numbers of those is the width of the machine plus the gallonage. Uh, next machine we go to is the, the mid, which is 4630, ZS4630. So 46 inches wide with 30 gallons. So there'd be the guy, he's doing some commercials, you know, some large residential, but he can still fit in a four foot gate. So that's going to be, you know, uh, one of your big choices is what gate sizes do I need to fit in? Now, if someone said, well, we do have a few three foot gates, you can always remind them, you know, you've got a 75 foot hose reel that comes standard on that machine. If you do have a small lawn, you can drag that in, spray it. Um, use a little Scott's hand grinder is a great tool to have to do those little bitty backyards. Um, and then lastly, the guy that's an all commercial, large residential, they'll go with the ZS5260, which is our max. You know, you're 30 gallons on either side. You can run two different products with 60 gallons on there and a 10 foot boom. You can do four acres on one fill up. And we typically say you can do an acre in 15 minutes spread and spray. So production on that would be you could do four acres spread and spray with that machine per hour. So if you're a large commercial guy, that that's going to be the route you're headed. And it's our most popular machine is the, the 5260. Yeah. I've got a friend. He's got the, um, he's got a Z spray. I don't, honestly don't know which one. It's probably the middle or the, or the bigger one, but he, he, we put out lime in, in the November, December. And he's talking to me about how he, his problem is trying to get enough lime on the trailer to keep up with what the production he could do. Cause I mean, he's like, he's like, you don't believe how many yards we do. You know, he'd call, he's like me and one guy had this machine and I was on the Z spray and he's like, I did like 40 yards by myself, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking, man. So, and he, he'll knock out his, he's like done in three weeks. He's done like right after Thanksgiving and I'm up working until one week before Christmas, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, man, whatever. So anyway, production is, uh, yeah. And, and that's a great topic you just brought up there, too, is also, you know, the guy that does want to use just a truck with a rack. Do you have enough space to keep that guy busy all day? So when you see the bigger commercial guys, a lot of them will go to a flatbed truck where they can carry two skids of fertilizer, you know, 300 gallons of liquid, because unless they want that guy being done by two o'clock each day, um, he'll need a lot of product to uh, keep that machine busy. All right, Will asked the most important question here: Roll Tide or War Eagle? I, I'm a well, I'm a Roll Tide. My wife's an Auburn fan. She went there, and God love her. They 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 about nearly lost to Georgia State this weekend. So we're happy for for they won. And uh, but yeah, I, I'm Roll Tide here. So uh, hey guys from Tampa, Florida, I'm Josh. Matt says, Jason, when implying the long term for are you only spot spraying those lawns of following apps or do you add some urea on following apps? Well, Matt, I'm, and I'm trying to I'm probably going to be adding a, another 
uh, application. I've been doing seven apps a year. Some guys around here do eight, some do nine, some do 12, some do six. I'm going to eight next year. And so, but to answer your question, yeah, I do have one application where I'm basically going around spot treating nut sedge all summer, you know, for the summer. So, and what I'm trying to do uh, and the reason I'm going to eight apps, I'm going to start using spectacle uh, in May is the plan which is also the time I need to be putting out fertilizers. That's the tricky part about them. Either have to go fertilizer earlier and do a slow release or fertilize early and then come back and fertilize after. So I'm, I'm still thinking through some of those things, but um, I'm trying to go with the spectacles. Dove weed has become a big problem in our area and spectacles not going to cure that, but it definitely will help. Um, Kalinga has just killed me this year. We had a very rainy summer. And so I'm hoping that putting out the spectacle is going to help. Uh, with the summer weeds because yeah, I, I did a lot of backpacking yards this summer, unfortunately. All right. Emily says, any thoughts on adding a secondary smaller tank to the LTS? The current option isn't ideal. What do you think about that? Uh, it's, it's definitely something we're considering. You know, I, I would have the question of, you know, what size does it need to be and, and kind of what, what would the purpose, what would you intend to use it for? Would you want it to, you know, as uh you know, to have like a total kill product in, or is it something that has to get plumbed through the, the rest of the machine? And then to add to that, what one of the challenges is, is if you want something to carry on a rack, you know, you, you got to be real careful of your limitations of weight. And then also the smaller the machines are to fit through a three foot gate, where do you put that at? And you, you don't want to go higher with stuff like that because then you ruin your, your hillside stability and things. So, Sometimes challenges um, with the smaller machines getting everything on there that everybody wants. All right. Alex says, what's the typical split if work is subcontracted out? I have never uh, negotiated one of those deals. I, I don't I don't know what it would be. I, I, I'm just going to guess. Shoot, I don't even know. I guess it probably range anywhere from 10 to 25% in that range. I, I don't know, but you, you, that's going to be negotiated out between, you know, cause the way it works for me, I just like, I do a lot of weed control fertilization and I, a lot of the guys that mow lawns all day, I've got relationships with them. So they send me weed control business. I send them mowing business, but it's, it's just kind of a agreement where I send you business, you send me, but there's no cash involved in the deal. But I understand there are situations I've heard people like, well, you know, what if I have a tree service that I'm partnering with and I'm able to send you business or maybe it's a weed control thing and you give me a percentage. Um, but somebody has some thoughts on that in the, on the, in the comments, you can leave. If you have a situation where you subcontract work out, what kind of percentage do you give them? What's the process of treating a fungus that's already established on a St. Augustine lawn? You know, sometimes in the fungus, I'm going to share with you my limited experience on some of the fungus. I know, I understand if you got St. Augustine, maybe you live down in Florida or you're in a coastal situation where the climate's different. A lot of times the fungus that we deal with here, they, they start this time of year. So when, when I'm out putting out my fall pre-emergent, what we do, we put out the, the fungicide now um, because that's when the fungus starts. Now, you might not notice the fungus in the lawn until the following spring because your grass goes dormant. The fungus has made a big brown spot, but you can't see the big brown spot because your whole yard's brown. And then next spring, your yard starts turning green. And what doesn't turn green? That big damaged area. So we put our fungicides out now. If you've got one already in the, the St. O.C. lawn, you're going to have to look uh, and get some advice on a fungicide. You know, a lot of them are just more preventative. And you may have to find one that has some curative uh, ability to maybe treat it and ultimately, you know, adjust your irrigation. If somebody's sometimes the customers water all the time, they have a drainage problem where it stays wet. So there may be some practical things you can do. Jackie says, good evening, guys. Chris says, is there any manufacturing delays on the ride on sprayers? Also, the Z Air 840 models, it's still available with all the attachments. Uh, so the Z Air 8 uh, 40 inch model is available with all the attachments. And then as far as manufacturing goes, you know, it's just like it is in the auto industry, right? I mean, there's, you know, this just in time manufacturing that we've had for so long works so well. And then COVID hits and 
it kind of throws everything through a loop. So, um, you know, there are some delays we're running into. And, and, you know, really what the situation is now is we don't have any inventory, right? Uh, we're kind of hand to mouth, so to speak, with getting units out there. Uh, so we're we're working as hard as we possibly can. We actually have a, a couple of guys up from one of our distributors in Florida to help uh, build mowers on the line this week. Um, so having said that, you know, we're, we're getting equipment out there as quickly as we possibly can. Demand has never, we've never seen it like this before. Um, so now it's just a matter of, of getting all the components, uh, we need in to, to run the units down the line. All right. William says, thanks guys. I think we addressed a question of his earlier. Brian says, do you know of any cheat sheets showing all the common herbicides you talked about along with their active ingredients? Brian, I, I have just uh, created one. If I could show you my screen right now, I'm not going to, but that is, I've uh, created that with, uh, and I'm going to put like, I'm going to sell it, but it, on my website, but it's, it's going to have the herbicide, the grass. It's basically all the information you could get off the label, but to save you time of having to look up each label. So it'll be the herbicide, the active ingredient, the grass types you can use it on the rates per thousand square feet, the rates per acre. And I might have a little section that talks about kind of my tips on it, what product, what weeds I use that product for and things like that. So that I'm hoping to have that out soon. Other than the one I just created, I'm not aware of another one. Uh, Robert says, post GIE, how soon do you think the new X mark standard will be available to purchase? Um, springtime, early springtime. My, so, uh, is that is there a name? Is that like top secret or is that out or something? Is that I don't know what I don't have no, any information. Um, is there we'll be, a name uh, for it or what's going yeah, on with it? It's uh, it's called the Vertex. The the name was leaked a couple of weeks ago, um, so it's out there. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're excited to be showing it at GIE this year, uh, and they'll be available to purchase this spring. It's called the Vertex. Yep, V E R T E X. Okay, and so it'll be uh, replacing the Starus, I guess, as far as y'all's lineup goes. That is correct. And can you tell us about it, as far as what what improvements, or, or is that can, what can you tell us? If, if you can't um, it's it it's uh, we went back to the basics. Let's put it that way. Uh, we knew we had some problems and issues with the Starus, so. Redesigned a whole bunch of things, uh, went back and kind of went to the drawing board on some stuff and, and really we're excited to be having a stand on mower out there with the X mark name on it. Uh, and it'll, it'll be worthy of our commercial heritage. All right. Well, it, it, and will it be at the GIE Expo? I'm assuming. Yes, it will. Yes, will they it have will. it out in the demo area? Yep. All right. I may have to go see if I can ride that thing. Um, Sean is in Michigan. What should I be putting down to be prepared for spring? Andy, what'd you say people are putting down? Well, there? so I uh, did Michigan people uh, like hear this, but oh. Purdue's uh, number one recommended if you're only going to do one application a year, if that's all you're going to do, it's fall winterization. And so typically it's 4600 is what a lot of people will use um, or just a high nitrogen level. But the wait until the turf stops actively growing. So it'll store all those nutrients. When spring comes, you'll get a nice green up. And then the, what you're hoping for there is that turf to do better than the weeds do and choke out all those weeds. So fall app would be your number one, uh, according to Purdue. And uh, that's, if you're only gonna do one a year, that's the one to do. If you're gonna do two, then your second one would be pre-emergent in the spring. That's not too much different. Well, we, you know, if I if I tell people you can only do one down here, I would tell them do the do the the January February pre emergent. We got to, our crabgrass can germinate sometimes late February, so we got to get it out early. And in our Bermuda yards, that they'll just get completely destroyed with crabgrass if you don't do that. Um, but then the fall, what we're doing now, the fall pre emergent would be second behind that. Chris says. Any chances you guys teaming up with First Products making a ride-on aerovator? What is he talking about? Um, so probably not for an aerovator. There's a lot of moving parts on an aerovator. Um, and, I mean, we're talking real high-dollar equipment, you know, something that's a real specialized product like that, you know, 
50, 60 thousand dollars upwards. Um, and again, that's typically not something that you're going to see, uh, commercial guys offering, offering as a service. Um, that's more of a golf course kind of thing, uh, where you see those aerovators being used. What is an aerovator? So it, it vibrates while it's, it's kind of punching itself into the turf. Um, there's okay. reciprocating ones and then ones that are on rollers. Um, they're great for places where you're, you need to relieve compaction, but you can't have cores on the top of the turf because it's a high traffic area or something like that. Um, you can okay. see aerovators used there. I got you. Sean says, I use four different sprayers, one for different applications, 2,400 square foot lawn. Is that, Sean, is that your own personal yard or is that you talking about for business? I'm thinking you're talking about your personal yard. Grasshopper is in the house. Everybody rejoices. Thank you for coming. Uh, what type of, what grass type does the top golf courses use down south in the runways in the greens is just Bermuda. Uh, you know, where I live, you, you will see some bent grass greens. Um, I'm about, I guess, as far south as, as you will see those, but there are some golf courses that have bent grass greens here. A lot of times they have a big fan out there in the summer trying to keep them cool and just, you know, it, it's a little bit of a, a, a job keeping them cool enough in our summers. But, um, you know, I guess most of the fairways – not that I'm necessarily playing the top golf courses, but of all the golf courses that I play, it's almost always Bermuda. And the greens are typically Bermuda, with the exception of a few bent grass ones. Jackie says, go Hogs. I'm assuming it's Arkansas, and they, they have been exceeded everybody's expectations. Uh, beat Texas really bad, and then uh, who did they beat? Texas A&M beat them, so they, they are doing so good. I'm happy for them. Sean says, roll tie. We, we beat everybody. So um, between the two X Mark 30 mowers, besides the different engine, which one is easier to deal with as far as maintenance and overall longevity? Six, one half dozen, the other. I didn't know y'all had two to X Mark 30 mower. I thought there was, uh, what's it? What's, I thought there was one X Mark 30 in the, in the 21. So so we we have an X Mark 30 that's powered by a, a 180 Kawasaki Kai engine, and then we have another one that's powered by a, a Kohler 200. Okay, so a Kawasaki option and a Kohler option. I got you. Is that the main difference between the two? Is just what the engine manufacturer? Yep. All right. I'm trying to help a, a gal friend purchase a zero turn mower. What stands out on? X mark machines. How is the warrant warranty? Uh, what what would you tell somebody that's maybe a new in the zero turn mower market? Why what would you tell them why they should consider an X mark? Uh, best cutting deck out there. All right. What about the warranty? He's asking specific. Is that how does that work for homeowners versus uh, commercial guys? So it's same warranty across board, um, and it all kind of depends on on what machine you're you're picking out. But um, I mean, somewhere anywhere between two to four years, depending on 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 you know what piece of equipment it is. Chris says a larger capacity version of the LTS would be nice to have as an option. Jackie is still supporting the hogs. Uh, Juan says, do you really need a pH soil test before applying lime? What's the recommended rate for a thousand when the best time to apply Northeast Georgia Bermuda turf? Thank you. Uh, Juan, here, here's my answer to that. And uh, it's what I've been taught in, in our area, we have acidic soil and it's basically known to be acidic. And so we, and when you put out fertilizer, and herbicide sometimes the soil is becoming more acidic so um and you know you can there's some indicators that would show you that the soil is acidic like for instance um i mean th these aren't perfect but like we have weeds like broom sage loves acidic soil so i went to the yard today and just covered up in broom sage i can just about guarantee you without taking a soil test that it has acidic soil uh you got uh, wild onions wild garlic they like acidic soil i mean you can Maybe look at your hydrangeas. Are they blooming pink or blue or things like that? But in our area, it's just we almost every company around here does lime standard 
Uh, and then we do it in the wintertime. You can do it any time, but that's the one gap in our schedule where we have time to do it. Now, with that being said, you asked about the rates. Um, you know, I'm using this fast acting lime. So it, like kind of the, the maintenance rate is a bag for every 10,000 square feet. But like I said, if I get on a yard that let's say I put out fertilizer, it's just not responding or, you know, it's just not doing well, then I may um, double that rate to try to actually bump up the pH versus just trying to ma maintain it. But it's kind of preventative maintenance, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, in other areas, that, that's our soil type. There, there's parts of the country that's going to have alkaline soil. So it would just depend on where you live. And there may be some areas where it's some of both and you would want to do a test. But we just have a sick soil. And think that our grass will tolerate it. You know, Bermuda grass will tolerate that, but it's not ideal. So we want to keep the pH up because eventually if the pH gets too low, it's going to affect the quality of the turf. X mark, what about a sprayer for side-by-sides? Anything in the future? Nope. <laughs> Easy enough. Emily says something like a two-gallon batter sprayer for the LTS would be uh, would be nice to have something for sedges in the main tank, for example, and something for crabgrass in the small tank. I guess people are giving you all their feedback on how, how they would like to improve it. And you, I know yep, you guys perfect. Love it take a lot of customer um i'm sure y'all receive a lot of feedback on a mower before you design the new mower and same with the z turf equipment there's always uh, taking in customers experiences and what they're wanting to do do you take on non-irrigated properties do you change your treatment approach any i do uh, again i'm mostly doing bermuda grass it's almost impossible to kill bermuda grass from a drought i mean it had to be a crazy severe drought um so, I mean, yeah, it would be great if everybody had irrigation and watered, watered the grass, but um, it, it's most of the slow-release fertilizer almost never going to burn the grass. Um, the herbicides, yes, they, they pretty much do need to be watered in, but it's not like something that has to happen the next day. So, usually if it's watered within a couple of weeks, it's fine. So, uh, Chris is getting his questions in tonight. Xmart, what about sprayers for UTVs in the future? I think that's just a different market. You know, that's some, that's uh, I'm sure there's manufacturers out there doing that. That would be outside of probably what they're looking to do. I'm 21 days in my reno. I use GCITTTF turf type tall fescue. I put down tenacity and starter fertilizer. I cut back on water and already had two mows in since the grass grew about four inches. What are my next steps? Andy, you got any thoughts to help these people, these cool season grasses? Well, yeah, depending on where he's at in the country, that that might be one something we'd want to know there. But um, you know, just going into to, if he's mowed it twice, typically what we say around here is once you've mowed it two to four times, then you can start going after it with some herbicides, getting your broadleaf weeds. But if he's in the cool season, it's you're getting late enough in the year that you might not want to hit those uh, weeds. Just uh, see if you can get the grass thriving and take care of weeds, broadleaf weeds uh, in the spring. And Andy, I'm going to take a break here. We, well, I got to, I'm going to have to kick up in the high gear to get through all these questions, but I wanted to ask you one while we got a minute. And just can you tell the people that don't know, like, how did Xmark acquired Z Spray and how all that, you know, what, what's the relationship with, with, and now it's Z Turf equipment, but just people see that and they, and they might still like, somebody might call a machine I got an Xmark LTS, but y'all really rebranded to Z Spray turf equipment and is there is there z spray or is it all z turf equipment just you know help us understand what everything's sure. called so yeah and jonathan correct me on any of this stuff or add in here but so in 2018 um you know uh, z spray was purchased and um so basically that z spray name was a pretty strong name so uh x mark had their lean to steer uh, machine and and a, a few aerators and cedars and they thought it best to uh, rebrand the um, Xmark sprayers uh, into the Z Turf family. So Z Turf equipment is basically all your Z spray product that you had from LT Rich, also combined with the Xmark product. So you're getting all those products. Then you're also getting all the dealers that that came with. Um, helps us out for service. So no matter where you're buying your machine at, 
you've got a local service center. And, and so that really helps us out. Back in the past, we didn't have, if you bought a machine from us and something broke on it, hopefully you were handy um, because the best we could do would be send you parts. So, um, or get you to try and find somebody to work on it. So that's what's worked out well is having all these uh, authorized repair centers and things like that. So pretty, you know, most, or, or what do you say, all the Xmark dealers, they would be able to also get you parts and hopefully provide service on any uh, Z turf equipment as well. That's correct. That's okay. correct. All right. That's great. Uh, also, they, the one other thing, it also combined Xmark and Z spray into, you know, some of our larger fleet customers. They now have flexibility to go both ways or an X mark fleet guy. He can buy Z spray um, on fleet and vice versa. So Z, Z turf company could dabble into the mowers as well. Yeah. And, and th this, this up here, he's just saying, he was asking why are my, he said, why are my next step? He meant what are my next steps? Tell as far as the, um, and, and you may or may not want, if you don't want to share this, that's fine. But like, as far as the market for ride on spreader sprayers, is that, continuing to grow and then in in that market how many what's the breakup of like how many people are buying like the big uh right on z sprays and how many people are buying like the smaller you know because i i use smaller equipment because it you know, type yards i'm dealing with hilly small small you know but i understand as i talk to people in other parts of the country Z sprays are super popular, and so do you under, know the market and and um, what what the demand is? Yeah, it, I mean it continues to grow because of labor. That's the biggest thing. Guys can't get labor right. We've got an aging workforce where you may have a great applicator who's dragging hose and pushing a spreader. He's forty years old. He's had both his knees replaced, hip issues, all those things. And if you get him a piece of ride on equipment, you could retain that great applicator into his 50s, 60s. There's even a guy I know that was getting close to 80 and was still running. The <laughs> so, um, and anyways, great guy. But he let his son run the business, but he loved running, running okay. equipment. So, you know, also, it's just like uh, productivity. So, you know, you might have a guy with you might have a company set up where they have two or three rigs uh, where they're dragging hose. They may be able to go down to two people, two rigs instead of three rigs. So when you think about that one, what that employee cost is, um, that's where the growth of, of equipment is coming from. And then I think also everyone wants a great lawn, right? So everyone uh, buying new homes and they see the first person in the neighborhood has got the best lawn, then they want that. So, I, you know, I think lawn care just keeps to, keeps growing and growing. Yeah, that's a good point about the labor and the, you know, obviously now labor is harder to find than ever and it's hitting everybody. I, we were in a restaurant recently and one of my buddies who's a business owner, it was what, a restaurant where you go up there and you basically, it was a, a fairly nice restaurant, like an upscale pizza joint. And you go, but you walk up there and you order it up front, go ahead and pay, leave the tip. And there's basically no servers. I mean, all they do is walk around, you fix your own drink, they walk around and maybe pick your plate up. And my buddy, who's a business owner, he said, you know what? He said, I think more and more restaurants are going to go to this style because they can't get servers. And I, I think not that there aren't laborers in, in lawn care because they are, but it, you hear it all, all the time how difficult it's been the last year or two. And I, but even if you had people, I mean, it's like faster is just better, you know? I mean, and so that's it's productivity. And I mean, I love riding on machines because I, I'm, I'm, uh, I can walk up a hill and do all that, you know, but I'd rather ride up a hill if I can. So, you know, yeah. there's, there, there's you know. not a ton of people uh, raising their hand to drag 175 feet of hose out and push a push spreader. I mean, yeah, those, those you know, those people are retiring now. We don't have that workforce. So I want to do that anymore. So, yeah, especially on bigger properties. I mean, small property is one thing. You get on a big property with a hill, it's just terrible. Brian says, I'll buy that cheat sheet. Brian, you may be my first customer. I thought, I thought if I make this cheat sheet, I, I know people will buy it. I mean, because I, I can't tell you how many times I've downloaded labels on my phone. I go back and look at the same label over and over again. And tell me how much, how much of this am I supposed to put in it? I'm like, I'm just going to make a cheat sheet. I'm going to sell it on my website. So uh, I'll hopefully get that done very soon. All right. Sorry, I meant to say I put down tenacity and starter fertilizer at seed uh, 21 days ago. Oh, 
so this is going back to the guy who said he renovated his yard 21 days ago. Uh, I think we addressed that one. Uh, William says, it's hard to, is it hard to learn to get licensed spraying yards like I do? What do you have? That's going to be state to state, William. And in some states that have a lot stricter, you know, shocker here, but in Alabama, we're a little bit more lenient on that. But uh, you, you take a test and, and give some continued education. But I've heard even in Mississippi, Florida, um, they require multiple years of experience or college education. Uh, and so, and then in some, you know, you can probably guess which states, but it's going to be nearly impossible to get licensed. So, um, anyway, it's, it's going to, that's going to be, you're going to have to look it up, uh, call your Department of Agriculture. Um, we in Alabama, we have a, what's called an OTPS license, Ornamental Turf and Pest Supervisor, is the license I have, and that allows me to. Does it, there's some confusion on it sometimes. People think, oh, you can buy these special products that other people can't buy. I mean, and that's there are some restricted use products, but mostly what it does is allow me to apply it to your yard and charge you money. You know, you can most of the products I use, you can buy on the internet or go buy from the same store with a few exceptions, and you can put them out on your yard legally. Uh, you just can't go to your neighbor's yard and charge him 50 bucks and do it. That would be illegal. All right. George, how do I get rid of bull pest? I say that. I, I, I know that weed that is, but it, it's a terrible weed. It, it looks kind of like Dallas grass. Um, perhaps follow I probably said it wrong. But anyway, man, I've got manuscript. To be honest with you, I hadn't opened it yet, and I've had it for probably two years. Um, but it, it is supposed to be a good uh, product for Dallas grass and grassy weeds. Um, you know, I'm going to say – on those grassy weeds, and I, I can't guarantee this would work, but um, you're in South Carolina, so I don't know what kind of grass you got, but if you can hammer it this time of year, again, this is where somebody was asking about the methylated seed oil. You put the methylated seed oil and use tribute total or use Celsius and certainty combined um, or Celsius and revolver or, or manuscript, and you're going to have to go multiple times. You, you hit it in October, hit it again in November, and then if it shows any life in March, you hit it again. And, you know, And if you got Bermuda, it goes dormant in December. You can hammer it with glyphosate. I mean, so that's just unfortunately, you know, since we don't use MSMA anymore, that that's kind of the approach on these big, ugly, grassy weeds. They're very difficult to get rid of. And Jackie is is thinks Arkansas is going to win the national championship. They, they're going to beat Alabama. All right, Jackie, come down off you, off you, you high horse there. Uh, thanks, guys. And Chris says, very informative. Thanks for being here. And thank you, Jason. I really like the channel. Keep it up. Appreciate that. we still got about 10 more minutes here, so keep asking questions. I feel like this guy, he's a regular contributor on the channel, and he always chimes in late and says he's working until working this time. So speaking of XMark 30s, I go through blade engagement belts very quickly. They're lasting about three weeks, then blade engagements get – to slipping is the crankshaft pulley worn causing this? I don't know. I, I wouldn't make sure tension's correct on your uh, your deck drive belt on that thirty because uh, it's ha if it's having a hard time clutching, it might be because the the timing's off on that timing belt. So there's there's some adjustments to make on the um, there's a, a tensioner pulley on that. So I would check that first. Uh, because that's unusual to be going through that many BBC blades or BBC belts um, so quickly. Chris says, is the Toro and Xmark same, the sprayers just, I guess are their sprayers the same, just different colors? I hear I hear things online, but not sure. Toro dealers closer to me. Maybe you guys can just address the relationship between Toro and Xmark. Because I, as I talk to people online, you hear that like, oh, they're just the same, they just different color and all that. But what what's the truth about Toro and Xmark and the relationship and how that works? Yeah, so Xmark is a division of the Toro company. Um, so you know, a lot of our mowers get built down the same assembly lines as Toro mowers. So you're going to see some similarities between them, uh, but you're also going to see some some significant differences between them as well. Um, for this specific question here, um, you know, it sounds like he has a, a Toro dealer that's closer to them. Um, and I would really emphasize, you know, building that relationships with dealers. Um, you know, being loyal to a brand is a great thing. If you like one brand over another, that's that's great. But you have to remember, people are going to be servicing this equipment for you. So develop the relationship at the, the dealership level. 
uh, see what kind of brands they offer and, and kind of go that route. Josh says, X mark. I have three star, uh, star mowers. I really do like them. Are they not great stand up mowers? So, you know, maybe y'all can address that. It's not, I have one. I haven't had any, any, I had one button go out that I had to get replaced by. I had virtually zero problems in it. It performs great. So I guess you guys have gotten the feedback. You know, what, how would you say, like, I mean, we'll still be able to get support and parts for our stars when we move it forward. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. And the, I, know, I mean, we've produced them for four or five years. So there's, there's a ton of them out there in the market. Um, and we're still going to continue to build two of our stars units, the, the 36 and the 32. Uh, it's more so on the 48, 52, and 60 where we'll have a change for next year. Okay. All right. Uh, best advice for year number two, building a weed control business. I'm pushing past first 100, really realizing I need to work on keeping my route dense. What's your best advice? That's a great question, Caleb. I'm still thinking through my business. I was almost exactly like you. I gained 100 customers my first year. Say, I, I would say um, – Get to know the mowing guys who can send you customers. That's that's a great way to get customers. Get a website, and I get so many customers from website and from the mowing guys. I mean, I I really don't want to pay for advertising because those are such uh, great. But I've also, uh, the, you know, you got to determine: Are you trying to get to five thousand customers one day? Then okay, go big and go broad. But if you're wanting to be small and solo or have one or two trucks, maybe then, yeah, I think the route density is, is super important, um, especially as, as – and what I'm trying to think through for my business, like prices are going up, fertilizers are going up, everything's going up, okay? So you got to make sure you're pricing yourself accordingly. And in my area – and I think this is true with mowing too. Anybody just run along with it. I think the market is calling for more people that will charge more and do excellent work. So, for instance, I could do six – applications and get okay results and i would get customers that would pay for that i think more people would rather pay me for eight applications and have an excellent yard and because i matter of fact one of my competitors that does that he's does more applications than anybody and probably more expensive than anybody and i think he's getting more customers than anybody because i think the market's confident they're like i'll pay you for an extra application if it'll make it look good so that's why i'm changing my price so i would say Position yourself on, on quality and don't say, you know, certainly don't compete on price, but don't even cheapen your program. Put together an excellent program, and I think people are going to pay because they want the, the quality um, work. So anyway, that's why I'm, I'm adding spectacle, which is $1,600 a gallon in the spring, not because I like spending $1,600 a gallon, because I want excellent yards, and it'll speak for itself, and I'll get more customers. Chris says, roll tide. Uh, Jameson Lou says, thanks for your information. George says, appreciate you, fellas. We got about five minutes or so. I've got a last question bringing on here. Do you do one time treatments? How do you price it? Um, I do. I Andy, you still there? I'm here. I, I think Jason locked up. <laughs> I don't know. One-time treatments around here, you know, a lot of times people just ask for broadleaf, and uh, those are some of your least expensive apps to do. So, um, you know, broadleaf application, uh, yeah, guys will do that for sure. Yeah, he locked up. All right. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I don't bad. know what happened there, but hopefully you can still hear me. Do I do one-time treatments? Well, uh, I would price it probably the same, maybe slightly higher, and that would be a deal where they're going to prepay. Uh, they're definitely going to have to prepay up front. I don't want to add them. You know, anyway, it, it's not ideal, and it's not your ideal customer. I, I apologize for that. I don't know if uh, – what what got lost in the uh, translation there? Go dogs! Uh, is there a pre-emergent that will kill yard stickers? I had somebody ask me, and, and when people say yard stickers, um, when, what we deal with here is called lawn burrweed. It's a tiny little thing, and it gets all in your feet in, in the spring. But it, it actually is a cool season weed that's going to germinate this time of year. So I tell people you need to um, do your fall application. And I'm using spectacle. I've got somebody wanting me to spray their backyard. I do their front yard. She's like, can you just spray my backyard in the fall 
to get rid of the stickers in their feet. So um, that's what I would say to that. What's good for controlling creeping Charlie without harming my centipede uh, and when to apply? I use change up and you can use it three quarters of an ounce per thousand square feet. And I know for a fact it works on creeping Charlie. If you Google, go to YouTube and type in creeping Charlie Lawn Care Life, you'll see me on video killing it. Uh, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. I'm so interested in lawn care business. Give me some advice. Uh, well, <laughs> there's lots of free advice on the internet. So you got to do a little study on when I build a, it's kind of broad. You have to go a little more specific. I'm sorry. Yeah. He locked up. I locked up, but I'm back. You know, it's like your hamstring locks up on you and you just, you just got to stretch it out. You got to cramp. You just got to drink some, eat a banana and get back in the game, man. That's what happened. Um, all right. I also reseeded and fertilized four weeks ago. I'm in Colorado. The areas near the concrete curve where I had brown patch and slow growth patchy area are not doing well. And what to do? I'm thinking you throw some more seed out. You know, it might not be too late to. Is that what you would think, Andy? Do they just put a little bit it more seed out? Could even need, you know, check the soil. If there's a certain uh, often you'll find underneath the sidewalks, that's where the traxel truck dump the uh traxel full of pea gravel. And so do a little investigating and you might find out that uh, you've got no soil there. It's just all pea gravel or concrete or anything like that. That, that happens a lot of times around sidewalks and things. Uh, Josh says, see at GIE. I'm going to encourage you guys to go by and visit these guys. Tell them you saw them on, on the you know, Lawn Care Life uh, video and they will be at the X Mark booth. I'm assuming you guys will both be there. I know I've, uh, I'm going to go by and see you. And I'll just speak from my personal experience with X Mark. They've been great to me. Uh, the people I talk with have been great and their equipment has been great. I've got the LTS uh, right on machine. I've got an X Mark mower and had had great experience with both those pieces of equipment and I can speak for their, my dealer has been great. My local dealer, he takes care of me. So, you know, that's part of it. It's, it's a team effort. You know, you gotta have a good piece of equipment. You gotta have good support from your local dealer. And anyway, I just uh, appreciate you guys, y'all's partnership. Appreciate y'all coming on. And hopefully again, we talk about all kinds of things on here, but I'm, I'm hoping to have guests that, Add, add a little different flavor because I didn't know all the answers that y'all gave. So I think this provided some value. And uh, so anyway, any last final thoughts, Jonathan, Andy? Nope. Thanks for having us on, man. Appreciate it. And I look forward yeah. to seeing you at GIE. We'll see you in a few weeks. I'll talk to you yeah, guys later. We'll see you next week. I'll be back Monday night, 8 o'clock uh, next week unless something changes. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Sounds great. Thank you.